<clears throat> Ever heard of the Bong Chong Dong ghost? I did. I believe in ghosts, but I was skeptical about of this one being real. The story goes that a woman left to her death after her husband divorced her and took custody of her child. So when I got the opportunity to travel to South Korea as an exchange student and stay in the same apartment complex she lived in, I jumped at the chance. I ended up staying right across the street where the woman committed suicide. Best part was, I often had to walk back to my apartment at night. However, nothing happened for over a month. I was starting to think the story was fake. Then something weird happened. I was walking back to my apartment much later than usual on account of a college party that I left early because I don't drink and things were getting too hectic. Despite this, it took me an hour for me to get back. The streets were empty and only my footsteps broke the silence. Somewhere, I thought I heard a bell toll midnight. As I finally reached my street, I stopped to catch my breath. Before I started walking again, I looked around, and there in the street behind me, I saw her. A woman with messy hair, dirty pink pajamas, and disjointed limbs was staggering around through the street, occasionally stopping to stare at some bushes, groan, then continue her slow pace. Feeling too exhausted and scared to confront her, I turned and quickly walked to a nearby side entrance of my apartment. Just as I was about to enter, I looked back for a second and saw her at the end of the street, staring right at me. Blood stained her face like frozen red rivers. Without even thinking... I ran inside and practically dived into an elevator. My dorm was on the top floor, but thankfully the elevators were fast. Soon as the doors opened, I bolted down the hall ran to my dorm, and locked the door behind me. I collapsed on the couch, gasping for air. I couldn't believe what I saw. As I tried to think about what I would do if I saw her again, I fell asleep. The next couple of months were strange. Classes went on as they normally did. And I didn't see the ghost whenever I walked back to my dorm. However, nearly every night, when everything was quiet, I would look out my window and see her staring up at me. I never told any of my classmates of that first night, but occasionally someone would ask, Have you seen the ghost yet? I think I've seen a woman in pink when I looked out my window, I responded. This is how it normally went. I didn't like to talk about her because whenever her name came up, I got the feeling I was being watched. As much as I tried to ignore the feeling, I realized she wasn't going to leave me alone anytime soon. This became clear to me when I started seeing her in my dreams. In these dreams, I would be somewhere surrounded by people. Suddenly, it would get dark. The people around me vanished, and she would appear right in front of me. At this point, I'd unfortunately find myself unable to move no matter or how hard I tried. Then, she'd get really close to my face, and I was able to see every stream and river of blood that covered her face. Her mouth slowly opened. But just before she could speak, I woke up soaked in sweat. She didn't need to speak, though. I knew what she was going to say. At this point, I had enough. In order to free myself from this never-ending nightmare, I had to confront Mrs. Cho, a.k.a. the Bong Chong Dong Ghost. I spent nearly a week preparing myself for what I hoped would be the final confrontation between me and Cho. I still saw her in my dreams, but instead of trying to speak, she just stared at me, as if she knew I was planning something. I didn't even try to speak either. We just stood there in dead silence, staring blankly at each other till I woke up. Of course, I never told anyone about my intentions. By Saturday night, I was ready. As soon as the streets were quiet, I went outside and waited. So there I was, sitting alone in the dark, waiting for a ghost. It was warm, clear, and dead silent. Just like that first night. Except this time, the only thing that broke the silence was an unknown bell tolling midnight somewhere in the distance. I took a deep breath and looked around. Sure enough, there she was, staring like a zombie right across the street from me. As soon as I stood up, she spotted me and started clumsily walking towards me. As she approached, I felt the urge to run, but I stood still, trying not to show fear. 
Once she was within three feet of me, she stopped, slowly opened her mouth, and spoke in a low, raspy voice. Where is my baby? She whispered. I, I think she's somewhere with her father, I responded, forcing myself to keep direct eye contact. I knew she would ask me this, so I decided to answer truthfully. I waited for a response from her, but instead she just stared blankly at me as if she didn't understand me. I gulped and tried to get through to her. I don't know where your daughter is. I just know her father got custody of her. I'm just an exchange student, okay? Please just leave me alone, I said. She just tilted her head, still staring at me with the, that dead blank look on her bloody face. It felt like I was talking to a brick wall. I sighed and turned to leave, thinking that trying to reason with her was pointless. As soon as I started walking, she suddenly grabbed my arm and spoke in a raspy hiss that could haunt someone in their nightmares. Where is my baby? She hissed in my ear. Without even thinking, I turned around and punched her in the face. Don't fucking touch me! I shouted as I violently shoved her away. Shocked, she stumbled and fell hard on the pavement. The frozen red rivers on her face melted and started flowing in all directions once more. Not wanting to risk being attacked, I put my foot down on her neck so she couldn't get up. Listen, you little bitch! I growled angrily. I don't know where your daughter is, but I'm pretty sure she's not here. Your husband divorced you because you cheated on him. Did it ever occur to you that maybe he took your daughter because he thought she was better off without you? How can anyone expect you to be a good mother when you weren't even a good wife? Face it, Joe. There's nothing left for you here. Now leave me alone. I put more weight down on her, on her neck. For the longest time, she stared at me like I had killed her only child. Her eyes were wide and a look of pure fear dominated her face. I thought she was going to scream at me and just disappear. To my surprise, she started crying. Tears flowed alongside her blood. Why? she wailed. Why did he take her from me? I found another man, but I'm not a bad mother. I never wanted to hurt anyone. I just want my baby. I lifted my foot off her neck in shock. She covered her face and continued sobbing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I made the Bong Chong Dong ghost cry. I felt like a total bitch. She wasn't evil. She was just blinded by grief. I sighed and put a hand on her shoulder. I'm sorry, I said. She kept crying. I really wanted to help her. Then I came up with an idea. Maybe, maybe you're looking in the wrong places. She stopped crying and looked up at me. I mean, was there any relatives who would take your daughter for a visit? Maybe you could go there and find some clues as to where she is. I don't know if it'll work, but it's better than wandering around this place at night. Her face lit up with hope. But, I quickly added, if you do find your daughter, I doubt she'll be happy to see you. No offense, but you'd probably give her nightmares if she saw you. You should probably clean yourself up before you do anything else. She looked down at herself thoughtfully for a moment, nodded, and stood. With a quick, jerky movement, she reached out and hugged me. Thank you, she whispered. Before I could reply, she disappeared just like a ghost. I took a deep breath, walked back to my dorm, and went straight to bed.